and this morning I'm, I'm on my pride and joy which is Mel and uh, in the interim between her videos probably in the autumn where I just started working with her and now uh, we have actually built quite a bond and it is about that bond that I want to discuss and talk about uh, creating that bond and why it happens and why it doesn't and also um, I, I can think of this as a little bit of a tribute video to her not that she's um, you know she's still very much alive but it's a tribute video in the sense that she's not going to be with us for much longer because she's going to a lovely new home so yeah I, I try not to have any favorites but I can't help absolutely loving this mare and so I'm going to enjoy every ride that I have on her and I hope that you'll enjoy vicariously riding along with me and you'll get you know some you'll get some great value from um, what I'm talking about with this bond so <clears throat> obviously I have lots of horses that I ride and it would be fair to say that you know although um, I enjoy riding them and, and bringing them to a better place I, I can't have a bond with every horse and I think it'd be fair to say that you know people don't you, you don't bond with every horse and if you've just got the one horse it, it becomes more uh, necessary or essential more essential that you have that connection now what is what really is this bond and connection well it, it's it's got so many facets uh, and, and everybody who has a bond with their horse will will probably if they're asked to describe it would say something different but essentially there's a sort of connection where you, you're on the same wavelength and usually to get on that wavelength you've together you've overcome some difficulties and although you know we all would love this push button horse that never puts a foot wrong and all that sort of thing in order to build the bond in, in reality you probably will have some history together in um, overcoming some challenges together and your relationship will be stronger as a result Gosh, it's a bit muddy. Now, Mel is um, a very easy horse to bond with because she's got such a fabulous nature and one of these temperaments that she kind of, you, you don't have to, uh, she works with you and that makes it so much easier while at the same time that is she would be more open um, it would be easy for a mare like this just to abuse the privilege of a mare who is this sort of open and wants to work with you and some are more shut down and and they won't let you in although you know with time and perseverance that too changes so I like to believe that Mel has a lot of trust in me and that she's ready to give that trust over to her new owner and the bond that we have gets strengthened really or shall we say confirmed with every ride uh, because Mel knows that she can rely on me I'm I'm going to be consistent with her 
and that there's no surprise. It's like I won't turn into this person she doesn't know, you know, from, from one day to the next. So she knows where she is with me, and this gives her an awful lot of confidence in me, and, and thusly confidence in herself. Now, I wouldn't say that um, she's totally at home with the stick, but she was very wary of the stick when um, when I first started with her and obviously she'd been hit with it at some point or punished in a sense or used in an inappropriate way but um, she's, she's so much better now and I can rub her all over with this stick and she no longer feels that she's going to be punished so that was a big part of the trust building process you know that I can carry a stick and tap her lightly with it she only needs it very lightly but I can put it anywhere on her sides and she no longer thinks uh, she has that trust in me so she has greater trust in me now through me per through my persevering with the stick than before so all these are little steps along the way to to creating that bond and so a, a big part of being able to create it is to have the horse relax while in while I'm riding her or any horse I want them to relax and I've got Mel to the point where pretty much she's not all the time because she's a horse and I do have to ride her but she's relaxed and when she's when horses are relaxed they can think and when they can think, uh, they're not reacting. So, I like to keep her as relaxed as I can. Oh, gosh. That, that was pretty muddy, wasn't it? Yeah. So, and I, furthermore, I like to think that Mel understands things that I say and uh, she understands my thoughts like Mel definitely understands what I'm thinking in relation to her and so pretty much I can ride her with my mind and for instance if I want to come back to WALK I'm going to do it now I just have to think of I just have to think of it of it and then lo and behold she's walking and so here she is just nice and relaxed ears forward doing her little breathing through the nose she's very slightly fresh or she is fresh but she's very manageable within that um because the turnout's limited and she hasn't been ridden since thursday or friday so today is monday and you can't blame her for yeah, having a little bit of energy, so we're going to trot on again and I'm going to talk. So now we've got established a lovely rhythm and I'll just keep trotting because, as I say, she is um, a little bit fresh but fully manageable within that. And so her and me are a team and we go out together and we can have fun because we're a team and, and because she trusts me and she's always listening to me. So when she goes to her new home she'll also be listening to her rider and her rider will need her. It's not that Mel needs support but she needs to she appreciates having a dialogue. I also give a lot of dialogue, not just with my body and my mind and my thoughts, but with my leg. She's having a few little snorts. I have a dialogue with my legs. So, where she was, she very much thought that the leg, I mean, Mel has as much impulsion as anybody would ever need um, 
and where she used to go to be ahead of me with the legs she just thought legs meant go they couldn't use them a great deal now she really appreciates my having my leg on all the time because I'm sending her signals with it now, for instance she would like to come back to walk now so I'm just keeping my leg on and a little press and tell it which it says to her no we must keep going and also I say it with my mind but because I'm talking as well as riding I'm not engaging as much with my mind as I normally would do so in order to connect with her I connect on many levels through my hands on the reins my legs on her sides my thoughts um, being with her in the moment and she's with me Mel isn't the sort of mare to be on her own agenda and uh, that's fabulous I mean sometimes she miss if Mel isn't doing it any time with a new owner what the new owner is asking uh, then she must say to herself I'm not asking Mel will always try and get it right but if she gets it wrong it's because it's been asked for in the wrong way or if not the wrong way then in a way that she doesn't understand so she makes her own interpretation so Mel loves to get it right and she'll work as hard as the rider to get that right so when you've got to the position where the horse is reading your thoughts and reading your mind in a positive way not to be reactive you can safely say that you've got this bond because the horse is with you on the ground and under saddle she says please can we walk now so part of that bond is not um, having the reins over short so as to be sort of like ready for trouble because if you're not having trouble what you don't need the reins you don't need the horse gathered up particularly so I've got Mel has got her head so that she can relax down because horses don't fake it if they're if their neck is long and low then they're relaxed and that's really where I want her so <clears throat> you know if we were just starting out from the stables whoa Mel whoa if we were just starting out from the stables um, I would just sort of feel her mouth a little bit walking on walk on at the end of, but I really I'm not saying don't use the reins but very often when you get a horse that you don't know you know the temptation is to ride on too short a rein and that's because you don't really trust your horse so you don't really trust yourself so unless there's a reason why you would ride on a shorter rein um, the more relaxed you can have your hands and arms the better